Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jovito here with Sobroni. You fucking traitor! How <laughs> dare you? We are definitely How starting to go for the motif of us being energy. dead right now, which we are. <laughs> Don't believe Sobroni's enthusiasm. He is dead inside. He is dead. Don't worry. I think that used up about ninety percent of the energy I have after <laughs> Anime NYC. So. I think we're good. I think I'm just going to collapse in the middle of this podcast. Yeah, and then I'm just going to do an impromptu karaoke session, which no one's going to like. It's because it's just going to involve Russian pop. <laughs> Not even K-pop. Just, <laughs> just pop. Russian pop. So, for the sake of us avoiding that awful shit show, let's just jump right into it with uh, this latest episode of Pink Kekai Sensen. Yes, and this episode I just finished watching. It was, um, it was an interesting character building episode for a character we have not seen much of at all, which is Zed. <laughs> That's I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why it took you so long. You literally said all that just to say his name at the, like the la- literally like the last <laughs> word you said. His I name. think very circularly. I think very circularly. Okay. <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> a very obscure way of putting it, but okay. <laughs> um, it continues the trend of, of us getting a lot of character building episodes from more minor, well, not minor, but more obscure characters. Yeah. Um, I I liked it. I liked learning more about Zed. Uh, I love that he was just, well, it's just more randomness, the fact that he was just a, a fish demon thing. Like, not fish demon, sorry, a half-man, half-fish hybrid made by some really rich dude while they talked about stuff. I thought that part was interesting. I also found it interesting that they actually... Uh, I always thought that he was wearing headphones around his neck to begin with, but I guess it's just like a breathing apparatus. I really didn't care about his character design that much to even question it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But I cared about his character design enough to question it. So I thought it was headphones. I made the same mistake as... Why would you think I they're mean, I'm headphones? That you're... Why, would she, why would you have headphones Because they're, sha- they're headphones shaped. They're headphones shaped. Why would you think his ears are around his neck where his gills would be? They're not. I thought he was... I thought it was like he was being cool and just wearing He's headphones. He's wearing headphones where his gills should be, where he should be breathing and not dying? Uh, listen, he's a humanoid fish. I didn't even know he had gills, all right? <laughs> A lot of you, liberties were taken. You just said, I don't know that a fish didn't have gills. <laughs> I don't know where his gills are. Great. I'm not a marine biologist. Great quotes by Silver Onin, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I'm not a marine biologist. I don't know where his gills are. All I know is that they look like headphones. I assume they were headphones, and he was like a really cool hipster fish dude. You know you know who we should have asked then? Um, the woman who did a panel for Pokemon <laughs> Biology. She was a marine biologist. <laughs> You know what I did appreciate about this episode, though? What? Tons and tons of chain. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, she was pretty... It was Lots very, of chain. It was very chain-heavy, which I'm... I was okay with that. I love the part where, like, finally Zap is the one to, like, land on her head. Oh, that was great. That whole scene where he where he just jumps in and is like, alright, we're not even thinking about this. We're just going to start a big fight was really fun. And, I don't know, it just showed a lot of their... They have a lot of good chemistry together. Yeah. Also, I loved how Chain was just so badass. You just like, <laughs> I'm gonna put a fucking rusty nail on you. <laughs> Try this shit again. I want to see like a spinoff that is literally just Chain and Zap and Leonardo. I don't know, traveling <laughs> around the world or something, <laughs> doing crazy shit. <laughs> <sighs> uh... Not that I don't like the other characters. It's just I feel like those three together have the best chemistry. Agreed, agreed. I'd like to see more. I'd actually would like to see more, actually more Klaus episodes, even though I know we've had them before, but it's like, it feels like I still don't know anything about him, though. You know, this season has not been heavy on Klaus or, uh, uh, what's the other dude's name? Steven? Yep, Steven. We have not gotten, well, aside from like, yeah, maybe that, that, that one episode one where he had to have his party. Yeah. But compared to the first season, where it was like, ev- like they were a huge part of the, you know, the story, and I felt like they got a lot more attention. I don't know. I just feel more like they feel like they're more the obscure ones in this series as opposed to the first season, where Chain was kind of more obscure. Yeah, agreed. 
definitely I definitely agree about that. Yeah, I, I also want to point out that we we had around episode we're going to episode eight of twelve episode of twelve episodes, and we have not seen his sister yet, even though she's like on the front cover. cover yeah, the... nope, just flashbacks, <laughs> just flashbacks. So eventually, we're gonna get to the main plot. <laughs> no, we won't. <laughs> this is the main plot. Ah, <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was a good episode. I enjoyed it lots. Yes, pretty decent, pretty good. Yes, let's. Shall we move on to let's let's to um blend s. Um. Once again, just another solid episode. I enjoyed this one a lot more than the previous one, which was the beach camping episode. Um. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just reading over my notes because, like, okay, so before we began, me and Silverney were like, we don't remember anything from anything. Like, holy crap! Like, it's as if we watched everything like ten years ago. But like, yeah, the con destroyed our our fucking sense of time. Even even Blend S, and I watched that at Silverney's place on what Sunday morning, and I like, I kind of <laughs> forget- it feels like it was two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh, but yeah. Oh, the jungle theme that was fun. Yeah, it was, they they adjusted the theme of the restaurant to jungle, and it was kind of nice. I liked seeing Micah get lost, adds a new character trait to her, her ditziness. Yeah, it was it was pretty funny. I'm up for you in a banana, sorry, banana outfit, in a monkey outfit. <laughs> yeah, that was cute. Um, Kaho got a lot of lines, which was nice. Yeah. Um, excuse me. More very blunt Ak- Akizuki and Kaho um, shipping. shipping. Yeah. Like, he, li- Akizuki get- also gets lost, and he just happens to f- tumble in on Kaho's breast. And then she's like, oh my god, could you, like, at least try to sound a little bit more interested in me? And he's like, oh my god, I don't know how to interact with women. I did like the whole I like that they finally addressed your issue which is he's a pedophile the manager yeah <laughs> um yeah the manager literally he gets arrested cause he like does this whole really weird scene like he's like he gets really hyped over like thinking about Micah in some really weird way and he gets all like you know expressive and starts yelling and he, unfortunately, was doing this, like, right in front of Micah, and all this taking place right in front of, like, a bunch of people, and someone just... T- no, no one took out their cell phone. Like, literally, the cop just Police went just up to him, up. and he's yeah. just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to jail. Or so, <laughs> you're going for to the police station. <laughs> all for some strawberries. For one pack for of For one pack of strawberries. That, that <laughs> fucked me up. <laughs> it literally did all, like literally the whole day, that whole like half of the episode is them just trying to get strawberries for the restaurant. The great strawberry famine of Japan. Yeah. Although I do hear fruit are very difficult to obtain in Japan, apparently, which I guess is kind of I don't know. I guess they would have to import a lot of fruit. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I wasn't so not aware your about fact that. for the day. Yeah, I was not aware about that. Thank you. Thank you for the contribution. I really appreciate it. Yep. <laughs> the um, we also got introduced to the semi introduced to the new character finally showing up. What episode? Sh- episode nine. This is episode seven. <laughs> this is episode seven. All right. Fine. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> I told you it felt like two weeks ago. <laughs> so she's finally gonna show up in episode eight. The new girl. <laughs> So finally, eight episodes in, of course, we get a new character. Is this going to be twelve, 12 episodes? episodes? Like, it says twelve episodes. Yeah. Oh wait, no, it doesn't. No, it does it doesn't. Not. Yeah, it doesn't. No. <laughs> please be twenty-four episodes. I feel God, like, please. But make like, this 24 episodes. I feel like that'd be such a waste to introduce a character on like literally with only five episodes left. They've done worse. There was another show that introduced a character that we haven't that we're about to talk about soon in <laughs> episode seven. <laughs> I'm so tired. I don't. Oh, right. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, the strawberry thing was really cute. 
Um, even though like that's so terrible for business, they really spent the whole day out. Like down, you are down a cook and down a hostess, and no strawberry like items can be used. Which by the way, uh, the rest of the staff did a great job diverting you know customers away from strawberry foods. Yeah, you know what? This show, I will say that this has one thing overworking, in that I love how it it keeps using the theme of them being in a, in a you know a restaurant to create different kind of scenario like working is great but it kind of relied on the same jokes a lot like you know the complex like oh he loves her and she loves him and yada yada, yada mm-hmm. and they don't know each other misunderstandings but this actually feels a lot more like it's directed toward the workplace like oh we need to go shopping for strawberries and we need to have a company outing and so it feels a lot more work centered agreed I mean, some some would someone would say a little too work centered because it's like like which <laughs> which cafe you know gets all their like employees and just randomly goes fucking camping. The cafe I want to work at. That's the cafe. right, but yeah, that doesn't exist in real life because like liabilities and stuff. <laughs> Damn the corporate world, right? I was also just thinking about that with the strawberries. I'm like, wouldn't they have a vendor that sells them straw? Mm-hmm. I hate the fact that we live in this. <laughs> we live in this world where we have to like actually boring world. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that we're so old that we actually think about these things. Uh, I wish I was young again, right? Um. Oh yeah, and then when they did introduce the characters, I love how like at the end they introduced them like for a legit reason, like oh. We need more people because he keep pulling out a character. Yeah, that was an interesting twist. I, I assumed that he was just going to be a new girl walks in and is like, hire me. Okay, you're cute. You're hired type of thing. Yeah, but no. it's a, it, They seem to have like an actual reason. <laughs> maybe she'll be a cook and a waitress. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I doubt it, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh, I love how, like, the entire time, like, uh, as you're having that whole argument about, like, how tired they are, especially between the manager and Akizuki, because he wanted, like, a cook to help him, uh, yeah. Mai was just in the back, like, writing shit up, like, yeah, <laughs> because <laughs> when he was like, I want a guy working here, like, Mai immediately took that, like, the wrong way, and started... It was a good episode. Yeah. I love the show. I love it. So I hope it's 24 episodes. <laughs> Yeah. I really do. Although then it would bleed into possibly the greatest season of all time, which is next season. So Oh we'll god, yeah, no, <laughs> please no more. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um in the same vein, let's move on to Himoto Umaru Chan R, episode seven, which introduced a new character. And this is also my episode of the week because it kind of mind fucked with me. Again. How? I mean, like, the just the revelations that, like, for example, do you remember when, um, what's his name, Alex was, uh, was spying on Taihei? Like, I think it was a couple episodes back, like, he was calling somebody about Taihei, and we we're like, what's that about? Wait, wait, who was, spi- wait who was spying on Taihei? Alex. Oh. And we we're like, oh, what was that about? And now it's like, oh, he's working for, uh... The girl who likes Taihei, his boss. So I'm just I'm just seeing these all these little, and I'm guessing that that's her little sister, the new character. Sure, even though like it's really Hikari. like this, 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 this is she also like albino like. <laughs> Maybe they are similar skin color, and then we had the. I'm interested in seeing the relationship between the. It's getting school rumbly. It's getting really school rumbly, but in a good yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I like it. I like it. I like it. especially because all the connections are coming together. Yeah, it's actually making sense. It's like, oh, I see. As opposed to, like, let's just stack a bunch of random-ass nonsense on top of each exactly. other. Um, I actually grew really fond of Kirie in this episode. Like, literally... so bad for Kirie. Like, I don't, is it weird? Like, I find her, when she's, like, pouting and, like, when she's, like, pouty, she's really cute. Like, is that just me? No, I think that's, like, the intent of her character, to be just really cute when she's pouty and clumsy and awkward yeah it works i it, it worked on me at least i think she's really like i her cuteness level has gone up like dramatically this episode in my eyes 
that had the same effect in book, but for uh, Ebina. I loved Ebina this episode because that, in fact, I think the last scene, or was it the last part of the episode, the whole Ebina backstory thing about her brother? Yeah. I think that's what made this episode of the week for me because... Hey, I made you some soup. Hey, thanks for the soup. <laughs> go on. Go right. on. It's not Straight the best writing ghost. in the world. Straight up ghosted. <laughs> because that's what happens. <laughs> oh, I made soup. I would pack up all my human belongings and possessions and just dip the fuck out. Peace. <laughs> not tell anyone. But I'm just glad it gave context to Ebina's past, why she's in Tokyo, and why she likes uh, Taihei, because he is kind of similar to her brother. Yes, he learned about her her brother complex that she now has. Also, her speaking in, was it, Akiba dialect is the fucking cutest thing of all time. And she needs to just stop pretending to be some Tokyo girl and start speaking her native tongue. Because mm, You know what? Is... No, I actually prefer her. <laughs> no, I, I prefer her speaking in, like, normally, only so that moments like that are even better. It would be so much better if she did. <laughs> Imagine how emotional that scene would be if she kept her Akiba uh, dialect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, you call it emotional. I'd just be like... <laughs> 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 it pretty much is the equivalent of like a southern accent. Like a down, down south accent. Mm-hmm. Like hillbilly accent. But I don't know. I find it really cute on her. I, I love her the most. I, I'm I'm cementing that now. It was a battle between her, Sylph, and uh, Kide, but no, I Abina for life. Too cute. I mean, I don't know how I feel about between the three of them. Definitely not Sylph. It, it, in my mind, it would have to be between Kide. Like it would have been Abina before this episode. Sylph. So- Sylph is, um, she's gotten a lot of development. She has. In this episode, like, her whole rivalry thing has turned into They More of, like, a friendship, yeah. Yeah. Like, now she's just like, okay, I'm just very extra person now. Like, that's who I am. Like, "Mm, that's nice. I don't know. I I, I like her. I think she... I like her, too. I just just like Evina and Kitty more. (laughs) I don't know. Watch now. Watch next week be a self episode, and you're like, "Oh my god!" So I know, good. right? God, I hope not. <laughs> but that's what I, I like about this season. It's actually making it's making the characters better. Even yeah. Umaru is a lot better. Like this episode was great for the way Umaru was like treating Kidia on the Ferris yeah. Wheel. Yeah, like in my mind, like I'm actually gonna ship them now. Like, oh yeah, I, I think. <laughs> well, no, I was shipping her and Sylph, but. You can just as easily ship her and Kitty, yeah. <laughs> Next episode, <laughs> you can ship her and Ebina. <laughs> Maybe. You can ship her and Bomba. <laughs> you could. You could ship her and Alex. <laughs> oh, God, you actually could. Yikes. You actually could. <laughs> this has a lot of potential. Fanfic writers, get out there. Yeah, do what you do best and make me cringe. <laughs> right. <laughs> Write a fanfic in the comments about... You know, you know, one, for some crazy reason, I don't know what possessed me, I decided to look for, like, pokey tuber fanfiction, and, oh, my... That is the my, most obscure that is shit so, ever I, Right, right, life. right? Okay, but it gets even better, because, like, there's, like, this, this I don't know, it's, it's, I just click on some random one. Cause I'm like I'm not I'm not about to like control F like nappy or shady or something like that. I'm just gonna pick like randomly go, and oh my god, the writing <laughs> was no <laughs> nexus. <laughs> oh, bar. <laughs> no offense to them, they're like okay looking, but like ah, uh, that's just like mind bleach forever. But um yeah, and then. It was like so. Oh my god! It was so stupid. He was like, "Oh," and he put it as he took out his throbbing blaze again. At that point, I was like, oh, "Okay, I'm done here." <laughs> <laughs> was it? I mean, was it done comedically? Like, I mean, I feel like you can't do that type of story seriously. So, it, it, no, I think they were being serious. Like, they just didn't want to like refer it as like, like it was. I think there was some comedy in it, but like. Not enough that warrants you using that. Like, uh, you start referring to, like, your extremities as Pokemon. 
Ooh. You have a lot to choose from, though, so you can get very colorful with your descriptions. I feel like there's only so many, like, properly, like, ballast, like, ap- apply applicable Pokemon. To Sir Viper. Exactly. His Arbok. <laughs> <laughs> His... What's, what's Sir Viper's ability? <laughs> <laughs> that's um, as the other one, um, as the other superior, uh, superior, superior. Um, oh, you know which one? That's really <laughs> a big tree bell. Uh, you could yeah, do that. You could do that for good. either. You, you could do, do it for either one, because what it's either a Venus flytrap, or if you put it upside down, it basically looks like a penis, like just like the shaping. Of it. Don't demonetize us, YouTube, please. Oh you yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. No, we're we're done. <laughs> we're done. We're done making money off of just, this video. Just imagine though, we do live in a world where this is a thing, where there are fan fiction about, where there is fan fiction about YouTubers. So I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. That this is a world and timeline we exist in. Yeah. I think I think we really should just nuke ourselves all the hell and just start over. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're at this point. Uh, I was gonna say, speaking of nuking ourselves, know, right? we won the Osama game, but <laughs> but damn it, we have a good show to move on to. So let's move on to UQ Holder. Uh, Stop the nukes for another day, right? A new character whose name is also Kitty. Oh, a new character? <laughs> what you don't say? <laughs> Episode seven, another new character. <laughs> Uh, jeez! Every show we watch this this week have a new character. I'm just forgetting. I mean, no, this is definitely like a 24 episode one. So I don't know. I don't know. I That's feel like I tell it myself. is. That's I feel like I, 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 yeah, I'm telling myself that too. But I can also feel like, oh, they're gonna rush this to hell and be like, oh, that's it. Anime original ending in 12 episodes. Ugh, bar. Um, I hope not. But um, I, I did like her. Though. Yeah, I like I her. Too. Her whole S and M lolly character it was really really strong um yeah so you know i loved her because for that reason <laughs> yeah of course you did yeah also she i really have a problem with her being quote unquote part of the immortals i'm like she's not immortal she just can just turn back time doesn't make you immortal technically that does make you immortal i mean it in the non-traditional sense where it's like if they're well hmm. no there's a huge 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 caveat the things that no, she needs to I do. Right. You just has, you, all you if do, she actually stuff dies, sniff before out the fire, skill, stab yeah. her. Like that is it. You win. Well, wait. If you does does the skill happen unconsciously? Um. Or does she have to actually activate it? Like if I just killed her instantaneously, like I took a shotgun and like. Blew no, 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 no. It just happens. Happen it just happens. No, then I would call her immortal because it happens automatically. All you have to do is just find the fire and snuff it out, and then she kill her. Good luck with that. I mean, if you're halfway intelligent, you should be able to put a fire somewhere where people won't find it. Mm-hmm. Which is why she put it in like <laughs> right in front of the area. <laughs> I just want to know how strong the fire is. Like, if the wind blows and blows, <laughs> you saw how big it was. It wasn't strong at all. It was a tiny fire. Like, I you like could just mm. blow it out. Like, <laughs> can I make it a room full of candles or something? Maybe, maybe I guess. Or like a, a fucking fireplace. Like, I don't know. It's a flexible skill. I'll give her that. It is a flex. It's a flexible skill. It can be it's, OP as hell if you use it like it can... consecutively. Oh yeah, you mean like certain people from certain anime that so totally don't sound the same at all. I don't get the reference, but yes. Really. Re zero. Oh. <laughs> You know what? Just... I'm still in. I'm still in exhaustion from the con. <laughs> That's my excuse for not being. I'm wearing the Rezero shirt. By the way. Oh, <laughs> yikes! That's even more embarrassing. You just take it off. I'm, t- I'm. I'm going to your house right now. I'm going to rip it off. Probably my size too. Maybe even us. Maybe slightly bigger. But whatever. Um, I wrote. For some reason, I called her the new Rika. I did call the new Rika because she reminded oh, me of Higurashi. Yeah, yeah. Because I think at some point where she's like telling um, Tota about like all the times where she's like failed, she's like, oh shit, I'm about to get <laughs> turned to stone. Yeah. Murder. Pretty much. It was pretty much the exact replication of what happens to Higurashi. I did love how they just she just dies out of nowhere when she's doing that, though. Yeah, so, you know, remember. Hey, I suddenly tell you, no, you really need to listen. No, I totally got this. No, you need to pet me from Can't wait for the UQ holder <laughs> zero crossovers. 
she, but <laughs> she takes the main character back in time only for for them both to get killed and then he goes back in time to save her from getting killed originally <laughs> <laughs> and then everything's confusing forever and then someone kills her while we're all slot and creates a time paradox <laughs> right i did love that they're actually tying nejima into this now I mean, like, well, they always were because Ava's there. Yeah, I totally but... forgot to, like, kind of... Me- we totally forgot to mention yeah, last Oh, yeah, we that, mentioned like... that last week that Fate is there. Yeah, we totally didn't mention that at all. I forgot we were caught up on last... Oh, because we were too busy talking about gender politics and stuff. So. We were, yeah, 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 <laughs> fair enough. That's totally my fault. But, yeah, fault. no, Fate is there. <laughs> Fate was there. And if you don't know so... who Fate is, he is and was a really badass motherfucker. From Nejima. Yeah. Like, he literally kills Nejima, like, a dozen of times. This one time where he got really close, where he literally just shoved a giant rock spear through his chest. But then again, we're get- now we're getting into the territory where I'm caring more about the Nejima characters than I do about the Yuki Holder characters. I don't know if that's, like, a first world problem or not. It but- totally is. It totally is. But I don't know, I'm just kind of like, damn, <laughs> hurry up and capture fate so I can see... Ava versus Fate and not have to care about fucking uh, Toda and Kuromaro and Karen versus... Okay, I would say, like, you should have that fight, but only for, like, five minutes. I want like, just a five minutes. I know. I no, want, like, a can't, whole can't, park can't. on that fight. We can't. We can't. We really shouldn't. Are you, am, I, am I wrong in thinking, like, I wanted more Nejima characters just pop up on Fate's side or something? To be fair, that's only because I feel like Nejima ended just too prematurely. Like, they just cut us, like, so hard. Like, yeah. Like, oh, you want to talk about NTR, honey, honey. <laughs> 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 like, Rock on just shows up, like, I'm here to help Fate fight and, like, fucking UA <laughs> and <laughs> show up and shit. <laughs> First of all, they're all dead. <laughs> Maybe not Rakan, but they're definitely all dead. No, probably Rakan too. I figure that they're all immortal. I, I figure something happened that they're immortal or some shit. Happening. They're all actually. Like, I'm, they're, I'm, they're, I'm, they're, honestly, they're the secret, secret my, UQ members. <laughs> that's my theory for this, what's going to happen next episode, because it left off on a giant cliffhanger of, you know, fate walking up to Toda. But I'm thinking, oh, I guarantee. Well, I don't care. I bet that Nodoka isn't on this, and she has the ability to read minds. So she's like all in, like, oh, this is a trap. So, we're going to trap the trap, or whatever. Let's <laughs> bring our trap in their <laughs> trap. So, wait, you're going to... Oh, excuse me. You're going to um, trap Kuromaru? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that this series is evolving into Nejima. <laughs> this would have been my <laughs> this would have been my episode of the week if it had just a bit more action in it which I'm sure is gonna be like yeah. next episode is gonna be like fucking balls to the wall everybody fucking blowing up the hotel or the airport or wherever the hell they are yeah definitely um I liked it and I can't wait for next week and I hope Eva just I hope their plan goes like goes off somewhat successfully they get into the cave and Eva's just there like time to finish business bitch oh yeah Please, if that happens, it's my episode of the week. I don't even care what else comes out. I don't even fucking care. Uh, All right. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's move, move on. on to Show Bitch. Show Bitch, episode which is definitely six. my episode of the week because... This oh, this was also almost my episode. Uh, it was so I mean, is it... T- no, there's not, there's not an episode that was also my episode of the week. We'll get to that soon. You know what? I'm making this my second episode of the week. I'm, I'm splitting this, this and Umaro. Excuse soon. me. Um... Just because the new character, another new character, <laughs> <laughs> another new, I, another new character. Literally every show except Kekai Sensen had new characters, and well, Kekai Sensen also had new characters, but they weren't important. <laughs> yeah. Um. So basically, there's this guy. I think Shinozaki thinks uh, that he's like trying to hit on uh, Kosaka. Could he keep talking? At some point, like he has his chest almost exposed. Uh, first of all, first of all, like first of all, crazy first of all, he definitely gave it away very strongly. Yo, the first... Oh, you noticed it too, right? When his first sentence is like, you know, two male giraffes mate with each other or something like that. Yeah, like, and I, and I, in some weird way, I dismissed, like, I was like, oh, that sounds really gay. No, I called it. I was like, I hope to God that he's like closeted and this whole episode revolves around him hitting on, um, 
on the main character. Well, and the main you, uh, yeah, so you I got was, it. <laughs> I was so hyped for this episode. Oh <laughs> my god! Like, and like, I love how Shinozaki like he goes like this. For once, you get to see him like freaking out and going crazy. Like he's usually always like the reciprocant or the recipient of everyone being really crazy. Like, and they're all in, like weird like eccentricities and whatnot. Yeah. I love how he's oblivious to the sexual innuendo with, um, <laughs> <laughs> but he's, what's the new character's name? Is it, it starts with an A, doesn't it? I did not write it down. I just, li- well, new character. <laughs> I literally just put him down. I literally just referred to him as gay guy. All right. Well, this is, <laughs> if you're going to refer to him as gay guy, I'm going to refer to him as gay guy. It's okay. So it's not, <laughs> if, it's not offensive because I'm calling him a gay guy. And that's literally the only <laughs> characteristic about him that sticks out. <laughs> <laughs> ha sticks out <laughs> <laughs> anyway i'm glad that he's oblivious to the gay guys um like sexual, sexual pun and no and no no. constantly like the scene where they're bad yes, yes, <laughs> he, he's like uh, fondling the balls on the bat and, yeah, like, <laughs> the and then he's like can you teach me in the corner like oh i love teaching and then the bat the bat just goes sticks up like i see all these jokes coming from a mile away but they're like just so over the top and stupid. Like, oh, I'm like, yes. oh god. <laughs> oh, and like when he's kneeling down, when he's like, oh with my the god, he's like, go put both hands on and tug harder. <laughs> oh, harder I don't know if I'm doing it right. It's okay. Yeah, do it like this. Oh, you're doing a great job. And then poor yes. and poor Kosaka, she's just going through it. Yeah, I'm glad that she's the one who's like going through the, uh, <laughs> going through it right now. So it kind of changes the pace a bit. Exactly. I love how everything was just so flip flopped. It was great. Hmm. Um. Even the end of the the, the <laughs> him getting hit in the balls with the uh, the baseball. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, it was just so good. Oh, also few things that aren't related to like that aren't directly related um i forget the older sister like the the older sister character i forget her name but like do you remember when she was like trying to cheer up the other dude like that random character yeah yeah why did he look so old he looked like he was a grown-ass man (laughs) I don't know. I think that's just for comedic effect. I know. I was like, oh my god, you're helping me? I'm like, why do you look like you're supposed to be a teacher? <laughs> yeah, that was... Maybe he is. <laughs> and then also, the transition. When they were transitioning back, I remember what where they said, but it definitely just sounded like... Oh, I think they're supposed to be like the sound of them hitting a bat, and it definitely sounded like like Otin. Like Otin Tin. Like as in yeah. penis. Yeah. Like... I thought that was pretty cute. Yeah, they were clever with their sexual innuendo. This show's getting really clever. It's a shame that it's only 10 episodes. Of course it is. <laughs> it's such a shame it's only 10 episodes. Season oh, so two? Question. No, yeah, yeah, right after we get our next season of Yakuin. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, wait, didn't they have like three seasons or is that just two seasons? I, I think it was two seasons. It did have two OVAs. seasons, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, we got our money's worth. Uh, that. We can't be greedy, yeah, you're right. We can't. Can I get the second season of, of uh, Sayo no Hanyome? My wife's a mermaid. <laughs> oh, that's, I, yeah, yeah. I Of all anime that needs the second season, that one does. Oh, that's so good. <sighs> Maybe in 2018, the year of anime, mm. we'll get that. But you know who d- definitely needs a second season? Not the next show we're covering. <laughs> definitely Osama Game. You know what doesn't even need a first season? <laughs> Osama Game. Yeah. <laughs> this, almost became my, this is almost my episode of the week. God, you make me sick. This is you almost episode of my week. Because it was just so, like, it was it was funny. Like, it was I actually so was funny. Extra. It was so funny. Like. I'm a Yandre for no reason now. Can we kill ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> but like, why shit on your? Why shit on this character? The one. All right, this is what. All right, no, I'm not gonna rant. But this the one pissed. All right, shut up. <laughs> Thanks, Alexa. Hey, shut up, Alexa. Stop, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Stop, Alexa. <laughs> keep, Alexa, stop. Keep going, Alexa. Gambari mas. <laughs> no, I'm going to kill Chris because he probably started playing Spotify. Now I got to delete this part. 
Wait, no, that was funny. Fine, we'll keep it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Alexa. <laughs> anyway, the, that was almost as much of a train wreck as Osama game was this week. <laughs> almost. Why destroy? Why destroy her character? Like she's one of the few characters you actually put a modicum of effort into building over the past six or seven episodes. How? She was literally just a girl who was just scared. Like, she was a scared girl. To, scared All right, but girl she's a scared ride. girl, and that's, like, 90% more characterization than anyone else had this whole series. Um, well, <laughs> actually, well, I like I liked Kenta, even though he was there, like, hi, I'm the cat who's gonna die. Mm-hmm. Um, I well, like he did finally die. Right. Yes, he did. Um... And I like that he was like kind of like <laughs> the the mirror to Nobuaki at the beginning, except yeah. slightly even more cooler somehow. I liked how um, <laughs> he just was like at first I didn't know he killed um like he he sent the text to um you mean what's the evil bitch's name? I forget her name. All I know is that like she was gonna die oh, anyway. Evil bitch. I was sad, which is so funny. She's literally straddling the corpse, and she's like, "Come on, touch my breast." Oh no, I'll not live. her, not her. I meant the actual oh, evil bitch at the end. Not what's her name? Natsuko. Natsuko. There we go. Yeah, Natsuko. Was it? I forget if it was the after credit scene or not. But did you see the the very end with Natsuko just humping that one dude? Uh, that was not in the credits, and that was yeah, that was at the all at the end. Yeah. That was just icing on the shit show cake. Yeah, shit show cake. Mm, but, I yeah. I was just here. It, for, it, I was extra. here for everything. It was so funny. Also, did you did you notice how it got like it got like low key a little gay at the end around Kenta so? dying? Like not once but twice. Nobuaki is literally like he's literally leaning himself against Kenta. Like he rests his head on his back twice. Wait, what? Yeah. He puts his forehead <laughs> on Kenta's back, and I'm like, "Whoa, wait!" Mm. Like, am I gonna hear some like sexy background music? <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't notice that, but yeah, uh, I know it was just very, it was a very intimate moment, especially especially because he did it before he found out Kenta was gonna die. Uh, huh? That that scene with that moment was the best. I watched it like three times. The moment he like they like just he just slowly realized that Kenta's gonna die anyways. <laughs> did he's, you um he's like we're free <laughs> right my lover we're free and he's like yeah but she's gonna die i'm like oh it's okay she's gonna die and he's like uh but yeah what about oh yeah he me? did he's have like, a nonchalant attitude about that he was very nonchalant like oh well thank god you're alive kenta so <laughs> I, I know guess, it yeah, sucks that she's that gonna be dead and well then, suck she's dead and then he's like <laughs> And then he's like, yeah, that won't change our fate. And uh, remember what happened to me? And then, like, the moment he found out, he was like, oh, my God. No. Oh, my God. No. Why does everyone I love die? I'm just like, wait, like, <laughs> Chiemi? <Is> she... <laughs> Did you forget about her, the girl you love? Is Kenta your new Chiemi? Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> that would have been a great plot twist. But oh. no, the plot twist we got instead just was another nonsensical. But it was... It 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 could have been a good plot twist if they had built it up in any kind of sort of any way at all. Like any kind of foreshadowing would have been nice, but no, it's literally just a no. Chiemi and Natsuko are sisters. I mean, they should have done a little bit more foreshadowing, but like. Uh... No. I don't expect anything from the show, so... Yeah, yeah. No, I was gonna say, oh, but you heard their last names, both of them, at some point, so... Did meh, you? Meh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he says, like, Chiemi's, like, full name, like... Like, the first or second Natsuko's full... Do they say Natsuko's full name? Yeah. Like, in the flashback, she introduces herself by her full name. Mm. Um, but at the same time, like, the last name is, like, very, like, common... It's like saying, like, oh, I'm Johnson. <laughs> My last name is also Johnson. Like, it's kind of like that, because both their last names are Honda. And, uh, like, well, I'll, you know what? When it comes to the shock, I'll 
give him a break. I'll count that as foreshadowing then. But it wasn't strong foreshadowing. Like they... It was not. It was garbage foreshadowing, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, I love how, like, Mizuki just turned into Yuna. And so then, stupid. And then the... And then the guy just, like... Like, shout out for him to, for being as, like... He did the best he could in that situation. Like, shout out to Kenta. He did the best he could. Like, he was like... Instead of being like, oh, well, I don't know what to do. He's just like, oh, nope, bitch, you're being crazy. And just knocks her out. <laughs> he has the strongest punch in the world. <laughs> just punch her once in the stomach and she faints for like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't punch us forever. <laughs> Long enough just to wake, just to die. <laughs> yeah. Also, that was I... overly dramatic, too. That was dumb. It's a lot of dumb scenes in the show. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, why are you guys reaching out to each other? It's not like you guys really love each other. Well, she loves him, kind of. Like, even though it I don't was... know, her whole character was invalidated by the fact that she suddenly became crazy at the end. So I don't know. Yeah, what it's the like she likes there's him. no, there was also no. Uh... Was there any hinting that she likes him? Like other than her saying that she likes him, <laughs> yeah, and the fact exactly. that there's a girl and a boy together. No. Yeah, yeah. There was there was really no foreshadowing to like anything really, but they had good outro music. I just like. I, my outro, I mean the ending music. The ending music was good. I didn't. I think this is like my first time listening Fine. to it, and I was just like, "Huh, this, this is not bad." The intro and outro are good. Yeah. yeah. The I best the part. Intro. The best part of the series. The, the only good part of the show is. This. <laughs> and that's only because I have really horrible taste in music, so I happen to like the intro. So. It gets oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah. The intro actually sucks. I, I take that back. No. The intro sucks. Screw you. The, the outro is pretty fun. Or, and then you, I enjoy my horrible taste it. in music. I enjoy my horrible taste in music. I thank you very much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. Well, Let's you won't be getting to... any of that with what is coming up next, which would be the last episode. Well, last episode, last anime on our lineup: Fate Apocrypha, episode nineteen, episode Q Ju- Q Q. Yes. Was it episode 19, though? Yeah. I forget where we're at. <laughs> yes, it's episode 19. Man, being a week behind on this is fucking me up. But anyway, episode 19. Um, so, yeah. This yeah, is this, is just, this is just like, oh, this is the episode that happens before stuff happens, essentially. Yeah, this was purely the setup episode. But as far as setup episodes go, it was, it, good, was yeah. it was neat. It was neat. I liked it. I liked seeing the interactions between Joan and Astolfo. Astolfo, I guess... Joan finally figured out Astolfo is a male. Oh, yeah, she found out the hard way. <laughs> hey. Uh, um, yes. But yeah, that was really, that was really funny. Um, the huge thing, which funny enough, I was already totally forgot, which was like uh, really probably the most important part. Oh, of right. I, can, I actually forgot about it until you just mentioned it right now. Again? Wow. Again. Um, <laughs> maybe he forgets when um, Kalas transfers the crest to um, his sister. Um, so that goes the other way around. Yep. Yep. Reverse that. The sister transfers <laughs> her her uh, crest to Kalas because she's like, he's like, you can't really do magic and you're also in a wheelchair. <laughs> And you also cry when you lose a dog, so obviously yeah. you're unfit to be a mage. When was this an establishment rule for the mage? Like, a mage can't cry? Was that always a thing? I mean, or like, a I mage guess, can't like, show warmth and mercy? <laughs> like, a, a dog can't, like, I guess can't be okay with uh, people, like, you have to be okay with people dying, I should say. And if you're not, well, I don't think you can really stomach it. I feel like most mages don't go around killing people. I feel like most mages are just like bookworms, and they're just like, well, we're going to study about the root and all that shit, so and <laughs> learn magic. It's just like Harry Potter. Like, I, I don't feel like you I necessarily mean, need to, to be, be a fair, dick. To be fair, remember who raised her? A neo Nazi who was immortal. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Maybe it's a family thing. <laughs> yeah, you, first of all, you know all the families are yeah, all the Einsburns. Up. The Einsburns. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I'm raising the Grail. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that was nothing but. Nice. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's nothing but you know, friendship and rainbows and puppies. There was with Irisfield. 
Not with her daughter Maybe. necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you mean with Irisville? Irisville, she dies. <laughs> well, I'm saying in the in her upbringing, she wasn't necessarily like raised, quote unquote, to be a mindless fucking like. I'm okay with murder and shit. Like if her mm. dog died, she would cry. If that's the the test we're using to see who's a fit mage or not, would you cry if your dog died? By the way, can we? I forgot something in the Osama game. I'm breaking the rules and going back to Osama game real quick. Spoilers for Osama game for those of you who care. Can we can we talk about how that girl killed her whole family and just didn't want to? Kill oh, her I totally forgot to mention that. <laughs> I, she could. She's a fucking horrible mage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She literally killed her whole family. She's like, no, I can't kill you, Choco. <laughs> I'm like, listen, girl, get a gun, point it, and close your eyes. Maybe wear some earmuffs, too. I can kill my parents, but I could never kill my dog. I can kill my entire family, but not my dog. <laughs> my God, what happened? What happened in her life that made her dog the most important thing to her? It must not have been, like, it must have been a really shitty life. To be fair, I could never kill Kyrie, so <laughs> I guess I would also be a shit mage. I could never be in the Grail War. Uh, no, yeah, no, <laughs> I don't think I could. I don't think I could either. I was like, I can kill Kyrie ten times over, <laughs> but like a dog, no. <laughs> <laughs> also, I kind of find it ironic that she's quote unquote not fit to be the mage head of the family or whatever, uh, and her brother is, but. One of them doesn't have a servant. One of them was the first one of the first people to lose their servant. One of them still has a servant. So Yeah. I have a bit of a awkward bone to pick with that one. Yeah, I'm like really the one without a servant, he's gonna lead the family and lead the charge and yada yada yada. Alright. Good thing I wasn't his sister. I would have fucking spited the shell. Well, well maybe yeah. you can be the family. Where's your servant? Also, I'm so glad the po- transfer of power wasn't like a you know, obligatory sex scene like it is in every Fate. Yeah, series. they took the high road there. They yeah, took the they're like, there's, uh, there's other ways let's, to transfer let's not that. make this incest. There's, there's other ways to transfer that crest, Chiron. <laughs> 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 and 10 million dojins will be written about that scene. Yep. Um, Chiron X Calus X. <laughs> Pure. Yeah, I'm going to get that out of my head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Sig. As Mordred, like, we'll see about him being human, or about humans. I don't really care about Sieg asking the question. I just, like, I'm starting to, like, pinpoint Mordred's, uh, like, you know that, um, whatchamacallit, like, there's posters where it's like, oh, there's neutral good, um, neutral yeah, yeah, evil, chaotic neutral evil, good, and all that stuff. Good. I think she is chaotic good. Like, she was really Ooh. going the chaotic good route. Joan? No, Mordred. Oh, Mordred. Oh. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, it's like, Mordred, she's yeah. like, I want to be good king. I just don't know how. You know what? I'm going to look up her alignment right now. I know that um, Atlanta is something evil. Like, I think she's neutral evil. <laughs> Not enough children. <laughs> she, oh, Save no, them. you're wrong. Mordred is chaotic neutral. Oh, chaotic neutral. Okay, well, she is chaotic. All right. Well, yeah. I got that much. We got that part down. We just misjudge how good of a person she is. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fair enough. I can see that. That that would be that was my second guess. Um, I do. I do want to harp on one more thing about the the sister and brother pair. Hmm. I thought, and I don't know. Maybe somebody can clear this up in the comments. Um, isn't it supposed to be, or maybe I'm just misled by Fate Stay Night. Isn't it supposed to be like an, a rule that you can only have one heir to the family? Yeah, so another heir is Kalos. I thought that the other heir would just be like you don't even learn magic because you're now a, like a liability. Like we don't even want you to. That's why Sakura was sold off to the Mato family because it's kind of like we don't want you to like you know learn magic and then get captured and give away our secrets and all that shit. Yeah, I think so in, my, in my mind, magic. in my mind, they don't like it. Does not apply as much to like bigger, more powerful families. Like, look at Rin's family. All that consists of it is like a house, a priest who turns on them 
anyways. <laughs> and then really the father gets killed, and then Miranda's left all alone. So, yeah, it's not like they didn't have resources to like teach both sisters like everything, everything, as opposed to like the Eisenburns, who I'm sure they have a lot of people who know a shit ton of magic, and the Igmilia clan, where everyone can do magic. So what you're saying is that that um what's his name Rin's father made the right decision. You support his decision to sell off Sakura. I mean, was against Sakura for being such a slut, anyways? Ooh, <laughs> get I'm ready for the flames! Flame me, I'm ready. Uh... I don't think anyone's gonna flame me for that. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think people will be like, hey, "Drew's right." I'll forgive him for not liking Shiro now. <laughs> right. Which um, we didn't see any of in this episode, so <laughs> that kind of thank God. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah. Also, I think specifically you don't learn like the true magic of like the family. I think that's what it means. Eh, I guess so. Because like everyone else, they all just learn like you know simple magic that it seems like everyone else can do. Like even the homunculus can do. So. All right, I guess so. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I like the scene with Astolfo and Joan. That was cute. Yeah. They, they, like, nice they're like, they're like, oh my bombing. god, look at us for teenage girls. We're talking about boys. Like, do you like Sig? Um, I don't know. Do you like Sig? No, I don't know. I mean, you know what? They yes. are kind of like teenage girls. Like, they're both like, kind of like checking for like the super emo, like, by Shonen type. And meanwhile, he's just like, Ugh, like, what's the meaning of life? Oh, hairbrush. Like, uh, yeah, I can see that. Like, if this was, like, a school setting, he'd be the, the, the emo kid sitting on, like, this is the, the stairs with, like, a guitar or something. Yeah, like, and, then you she, as, and then they'd be, like... Life is the, suffering. Yeah, and then, like, they'd be, like, the group, he's, like... Kiyama. God, somebody make Sticky. a fake Apocrypha, like, school day spinoff or something. Oh. I love how you said specifically school days. Not just, like, a high school <laughs> show. Just school days. <laughs> you went straight days. to school. School days, all right. <laughs> oh god. Um. Oh. Also, they were having match. They wore matching hairstyles. Oh, I didn't notice that. Oh, what did they both have? The um, like the long, the, uh, the like long, long like braid down. Oh, that's cute. Was, yeah, it was very cute. I don't know why that scene. I was like, oh my god, I'm totally here for this scene. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice scene. I liked it. I'm starting to like Joan a lot, a lot more than I did coming into the series so yeah that's a plus um, also love astolfo now so astolfo was always great uh also there's like chiron and the sister had a really nice moment and i'm like shipping oh yeah no it was, sure was it was it, by the only one imagining that or was it like kind of like romantic like i, don't, I didn't sense any romantic undertones from it. i sensed more like a you know I actually sense like a fatherly kind of tone from it. But, I mean, that won't stop people. Probably encourages some people. I don't know. I just, I just thought it was really cute how like, he would kiss her hand and she was like blushing. She was like, oh my god, kiss my hand. Oh yeah, there was that scene. So yeah, I guess there were some romantic undertones in there. Like, I don't know. I thought that was very nice. And, he was like, and then he was like, forgive me. I'm so clumsy because we didn't have this. We didn't have this form of chivalry back in my day so i don't know i thought it was really cute um and then also like the ending the ending scene i thought was like really cool like where sisigo and mordred was just like talking oh and then she like spray painted saber on the plane yeah yeah and she's like i'm fucking badass it's my fucking plane also sisigo is like sisigo is like really handy for like a not mage like he's like very he's very um like kiritsugi in that fact that he uses, like, a lot of things that, like, mages typically wouldn't use. Yeah, like a shotgun and a plane. Yeah, ex- exactly. And a car to run people over with. Yeah, I actually would love to see, like, a, like I don't know, some spinoff with Kiritsugu versus uh, versus him and Mordred. Oh, my God, I imagine Kiritsugu and Saber versus Sisigo and Mordred. Oh my god, that would be so crazy. I mean, I feel like Kiritsugu would win just because he's like, time magic, bitch. Oh, uh, but, I don't know how good 
CCGO is probably, yeah. I think Kiyotsugu would win. Kiyotsugu is pretty much Batman, so, yeah. Yeah, kind of. He's pretty much like, Batman. I'm sure if he had time to prepare for the fight, he'd... I think he, he he's like Batman plus... Um, he's like Batman if Batman was the Flash. <laughs> no, like 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 Batman plus uh, Spike from Outlaw Star. Something like that. Although Spike is more fun. Generally. Yeah, he's more fun. I'm, <laughs> for, for, in my mind, it's like the hair... And like the yeah. fighting. Yeah. 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 I can see that combo. Oh, also Varna just like is while standing around all the masters, so I think shit's about to go down. Yeah, I anticipate and also I don't think it was an episode this week. There was a recap episode. If I remember correctly. It was like nineteen point five or something. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we'll we'll catch up and be on time for once. I'm just hoping that this is gonna lead no. to a giant like no, of course not. We're definitely, we're definitely, we're definitely just gonna have like. We're six gonna episodes. next week. We're gonna cover the recap episode. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, absolutely. Not. I, episode twenty is gonna be like a, I hope it's a huge battle between like, you know, Karna and Mordred. I hope it's all like Star Wars ish. Like I, I want Mordred. Like, like just lo- like just laser beams no shooting phantasm. everywhere yeah. and people <laughs> shooting projectiles everywhere. Like that's what I want. I want Mordred. To like fly in, shoot her noble phantasm, and then fucking Astolfo's riding on his griffin, shooting his noble phantasm. Like, oh my god, I want like complete aerial assault while, you know, Atlanta's shooting arrows and going crazy about the kid. <laughs> and then Chiron finally reveals his lower half. Oh, please. Don't mo- don't ruin this fate apocrypha. Please be good. Please, please be very good at your ending. The ending matters a lot. Yes, agreed. Especially for a Fate franchise. It matters a ton, so... Yes, don't make the same mistake that Fate Stay Night did. Which one? The Dean one? Was that the bad one? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, but I wouldn't call it bad. We'll get into that in a little I forget. I forget how how that end. Um, I just assumed the with, whole series was bad. It ended with Saber getting her wish, kind of, and returning to her time to um, die. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't bad. It was just bad compared to every single other. Well, it was good because Ilya lived, so I'll accept. I'll accept that ending. Fuck Ilya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, well, sacrifices aside, we have reached the end of our beloved podcast. Uh, it was fun. There was laughter, tears, almost incest. Almost uh, but incest. almost incest. But it's time for us to go. Any last words, Silveroni? Nope. Um. Nope. <laughs> All right, guys. It, yes, then, nope. if you <laughs> if you enjoyed <laughs> this episode, and by all means, like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our Twitter for random shit. Join our Discord because it's super fucking awesome, amazing, spectacular, fabulous. Also, a bunch of ad adjectives here. And if you want to go that extra step and get some cute little perks while you're at it, by all means, check out the Patreon link below. You'll see pictures of our patrons above or on your screen. I don't know why I'm pointing up because there's no picture above my head. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's it for for today, ladies and gentlemen. This has been GNA Podcast. Once again, I'm Drew Bidu. And I'm Sober Oni. And we are out this oh. biatch. Bye. Later. Bye.